My name's Christina. I was born a Bilney from West Coast, born in Sejuna, uh, Cookatha. My mother was born in Aldea and I've got connections with Narunga through my grandmother Molly O'Loughlin. So yeah, I'm one of the Bilney, Bilney mob. Yeah, I was, I was stolen. They used to come and pick me up for the weekends. So yeah, like a trial period, like rent a baby, see if we like this one, and if not, yeah, not a good system, but I can vaguely remember that place. I was fostered out at the age of 18 months into a, a good loving family. I can't, I've got nothing bad to say about my foster family. God bless them. I never burdened my foster family with that, but I had my sister Peggy, my Aboriginal sister, Otherwise, go in her room and yeah, we'd sort of we'd touch base about it because she was taken away too from Cooper Pedy. Always kept it to myself, but I remember yeah, pretty much crying every night, every damn night as a child. So yeah, it was isolating. What well, was it? Still is. probably 13 perhaps and I went to welfare and you know just had to have my family but they so graciously gave us a little piece of crap paper with my siblings names I don't like that word siblings brothers and sisters but names and birthdays on so yeah they sort of helped but most of it I'd done myself I met my dad a couple of times in Port Lincoln unfortunately I think I met him probably three or four times, but he was in an accident, so he was in the um, Matthew Flinders home. So yeah, that was a bit, yeah it was, it was hard. I do remember my foster mother, I used to call her grandma, she took me to welfare they set up a meeting and I sat there for over an hour with her waiting to meet my mother but it didn't happen and after that I got angry, you know, I thought she just didn't want to bother coming to see me but the welfare didn't tell me she was actually in hospital at that time because she had a lot of um, respiratory problems and yeah so didn't meet my mum. I was about 40, 40 something when I got my first photo of her and it's like, yeah, that definitely, definitely like my mother. Yes, the culture, the belonging, yeah, belonging. And my ocean, I miss my ocean. I pine for the ocean. We don't explode, we get angry, we growl, whatever, but we implode, which means we take it and we, we hurt ourselves, basically. The isolation and, yeah, just the grieving, that's very, it's very personal, very private. But yeah, Im implosion is a yeah, big burden. Ignorance is more of a issue than racism, I think. Anyway, just you know, seriously, we've got we've got the means to educate ourselves now, and people are still they still don't get it. I'm tired of hearing "get over it."
because trauma is stolen generations. It's not just about us, it's about our children. My children are affected. Basically, it's just sit and listen to us for starters. None of this old butt business, but yeah, the government need to start sitting down with the people. Don't stop making decisions for us. Do not talk for us. We can talk for ourselves. To connect and to just get a little bit of healing and peace and quiet, apart from the birds, but yeah. So Chris and I, when we came back from the apology, Chris said, oh, we need, it. We need somewhere where we can go. So we went to Playford Council when Martin Linzel was mayor and yeah, he was right on to it, he was deadly. And here we sit in our little healing garden. Just have to talk. Don't hold it in. That's the worst thing you can do. Just yeah, just get out there and just ask. Yeah, just talk it out. Don't bottle it in. It's the only real advice I can think of at the moment. Too many of us would just sit behind closed doors. That's what I always always done.